Right? Amen. Good morning, Yaf. Good morning, Seatback. It is great to be with you, but I got to tell you, America is under siege. We see it on our campuses. We see it in our culture. And increasingly, we see it in our communications with the censorship from big tech. Left-wing professors, liberal activists, mass media, even some of our major corporations are attempting to cancel conservative thought. They don't want to compete with us in the battle of ideas because they know they'd lose. They just want to cancel us. I know what that's like. A decade ago, the Occupy movement didn't start on Wall Street. It actually started in my street in Madison, Wisconsin. The big government special interest wanted to intimidate us, but they didn't. In many ways, it's kind of like the, the car I saw driving around the People's Republic of Madison back at the time, where the bumper on the back of the car had two stickers. One of them said, coexist. You know those stickers with all the religious symbols? It said, coexist, but get this. Right next to it, it said, recall Scott Walker. You just can't make this stuff up. You just can't make this stuff up. In many ways, it's like the current calls from liberals for unity. They only mean it if you agree with them. If not, they want to intimidate you or recall you or cancel you. We have to fight back. In particular, we have to fight back when it comes to the defense of free speech. As was just mentioned, the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution clearly states in this case that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. But despite this constitutional guarantee, freedom of speech is most at risk on our college campuses. Think about that for a minute. The very place where it should be the most revered is where it's most at risk. Sadly, there are plenty of examples of college administrators and student government officials who are infringing on the free speech of conservative students. That's why I'm so excited, as Dan mentioned, to be the new president of Young America's Foundation. We're... Thanks. And YAF is at the forefront of fighting to protect the free speech rights of conservative students across the country. Not just YAF students, but every conservative student on campus. And here's just a couple of examples of the things we're working on that you can read about at yaf.org slash free speech. Twice in the spring and again in the fall of 2017, University of California Berkeley administrators discriminated against conservative students and YAF and our speakers just purely based on our viewpoint. In each of these cases, UC Berkeley administrators actually have applied what they have, which is an unwritten and I would say unconstitutional rule that's called the, the high profile speaker policy that they use to block conservative speakers from giving lectures on campus. The school used this to propose or impose, I should say, a 3 p.m. curfew. Think about that. A three o'clock in the afternoon curfew for speakers. They banned all marketing and they imposed these major security fees to try and stop us from having them. Then when we sponsored another speaker on campus, UC Berkeley, UC Berkeley administrators actually charged fees that were three times larger for security than they charged left-leaning students who brought a, a, a Supreme Court justice on campus in the exact same auditorium. You're not supporting free speech if you don't apply the rules universally to all students, regardless of their ideological beliefs. To restore the First Amendment rights of these students, we stood up and filed a federal lawsuit against UC Berkeley and its administrators. And we won. We won. Yeah, they settled the case and they paid the legal fees, but most importantly, they got rid of that unconstitutional policy and they stopped those absorbent fees for conservatives on campus. But we see it elsewhere. In a similar case, YAF defended students' rights at yet another California campus, California State University in Los Angeles, after the school administrators there tried to censor a YAF-sponsored lecture that brought in Ben Shapiro. So they, they said, you couldn't do this that three days before the president got up and said, you know, this is not good. We're going to cancel this event. And the students said, we're still going to have it. So administrators and faculty literally formed a human chain to try and block the students from going in to hear the lecture. We sued. 
With the help of the Alliance Defending Freedom, we filed a First Amendment lawsuit against the university officials, not just the university. And wouldn't you know it? We included the president. They settled. They got rid of that policy. And again, we won on behalf of conservative students and free speech. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, there are plenty of other cases. You can go to yaf.org slash free speech and read all about them, many still pending today. But unless we, unless we take action, this is going to continue into the future. Now, the good news might say, well, there's a recent poll that YAF did that found that 93% of college students say they're for free speech. That sounds great until you dig a little deeper and find out that half of all the liberal students say it's okay to infringe upon the free speech rights of other students because they offend others. Apparently they offend anybody except for conservatives. Let's be clear, young people did not learn this on their own. Years of left-wing professors and increasingly large numbers of radical activists on campus have shaped a new generation of snowflakes. That we garbage has seeped into our culture. And sadly, many corporations have now bought into this woke mindset. Having said all that, I'm still an optimist. America continues to be that shining city on the hill that attracts people from all over the world because of our freedom and our opportunities available to every citizen. Free people, free people must be able to speak out and challenge ideas. The Constitution guarantees that right. But remember, freedom is fragile. As President Reagan said, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. It's not something we pass on to our children through the bloodstream. It's something we have to stand up and fight for and protect and defend and then pass on to the next generation to do exactly the same thing. Ladies and, I end with this simple question. Are you ready to defend freedom? I am, so let's get to it. God bless you and have a great seat back. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking on freedom of religion, please welcome Senator James Lankford.